Okay, so I've already shown that a charge moving in a constant magnetic field will make a circular path. But I want to actually model that motion and not just calculate it. So we need to do a little work before we build our model and we can visualize this. It's going to be great. Trust me, it will be really great. So the first thing we need to know is if we have a charge in a constant magnetic field B, uh, and it has a, a charge Q and a velocity V, then it will have a force on it, F equals Q V cross B, where this is the cross product. So uh, I made this little uh, thing to remind us if that's the direction of Q V and that's the direction of B, then that's the direction of the force. So in this case, I'd have Q V, I'd have uh, B going down, it's going into the paper, that's why it has the X's, and then the force be to the side. And then no matter where it goes, it's always going to be a sideways force, which makes it move in a circle. But I want to show that it happens organically. Well, kind of organically. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to calculate, we're going to set up the situation. We'll have some, I'll have a proton, and I'll make a magnetic field, and then I'll give it some initial velocity. And then, uh, I will calculate this force. I can do that. If I know the vector value of the magnetic field, and in this case, I'm going to say this is the x direction, this is the y direction, and this is the z direction. So coming out of the paper like that. Uh, so I'm going to have a magnetic field in the negative z direction and a velocity in the initial velocity in the y direction. So it's going to be a proton. I'll give it some velocity. I'll use some magnetic field. It doesn't really matter what values it'll be, and that's fine. But now, if that's the only force acting on it, then we have the following. F net is the change in momentum over the change in time, where momentum is mass times velocity, if the thing's moving slow, I mean, not near the speed of light. So this should be fine to, uh, to use this uh, definition of velocity. If I solve this, I can write this as the following. F net delta t equals p2 minus p1. That's the change in momentum. I have to multiply both sides by delta t. I can add p1 to both sides, and I get this. p2 equals p1 plus f, we only have one force, delta t. So if I, the problem is that I can't just get a simple equation of motion without doing some tricks because the force changes direction. And so if I take a small time step, delta t is small. And small is a relative term. But if that's the case, then I can calculate the change momentum over that small time interval, assuming the force is constant, which it's not. But if my time interval is small enough, this is good enough to work. Okay, So I'm going to calculate the force using this, and I'll use that to find the momentum after a short time interval. Once I know the momentum, I can do the same thing with the average velocity. V average is the change in position over the change in time. That's a vector. And then I can say R2 equals R1 plus V average, which is just going to be the momentum over the mass times delta T. So let's go through these steps. Set everything up with initial conditions, initial velocity, initial position calculate the force. With that force, find the new momentum after a short time interval. With that momentum, find the new position after that short time interval. And then go back up here and recalculate the force, recalculate the new momentum, recalculate the new position, and just keep doing this until I get bored, the computer blows up, or whatever. But yes, I'm going to use a computer because if I want to model, if I have delta t of 0.01 seconds, and I want to do one second of time, that would take 100 loops. I'd have to do these three things 100 times. That's 300 calculations. They're easy calculations, but I don't want to do it. OK, so I'm going to do this in Python. And I'm going to move over there, wherever your my computer is. And I'll see you in just a second. I've kind of already started, in case you can't tell. Sorry I didn't wait for you. Uh, but all I did was put in the mass of the proton, the charge of a proton, and the magnetic field. Uh, so just a reminder about Python. Uh, if I put in 
uh, this is the mass is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 27th. So E negative 27th means 10 to the negative 27th. If I put in kilograms right there, and then I go down here and I say print MP, it's going to it's going to get angry. See. It's like, what the heck? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so when we do these calculations, it's a numerical calculation. So it depends on the number. You can't do other things. But I can put I can put this as a comment like there if you want. That's fine. Uh, let me say this before I forget. Uh, proton, can't type. Proton in B. Let's just save it like that. And I'll give you the link to this down below. Okay, and then I have the charge of a proton. Uh, I have the magnetic field. I want this as a vector. So again, I'm going to have the into the screen as the negative z direction. So I need to multiply this by vector 0, 0, negative 1. Now it's a vector in the z direction. If you don't do that, when you try to take the cross product, you're going to get in trouble. Okay, so be careful. So now I'm going to make my proton. I'm not going to show the magnetic field. It's just there. Uh, I can show you how to make it later, but for right now it's just there. So let's say uh, make an object called a proton, and it will be a sphere. So a sphere is a built-in function in Python. Let me see it like that and run it. I'll show you just in case you've never seen vPython before. Uh, so there it's it made the sphere. This is in um, trinket.io, but you can also go to glowscript.org. Uh, they're the same thing. It's online. So you see here I have an actual 3D uh, sphere. I can actually rotate it around and everything. So it's it makes all that for me. Uh, so let's actually make, the, let's give it a position. Let's just put it at the origin just to make things simple. Uh, let's give it a radius. Now this one's a little bit tougher because I don't want to actually make the size of a proton. Because if I do that, you won't be one, what's the size of a proton, right? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, but also you're not going to be able to see it. It's going to have a, it's going to move over a distance of, you know, multiple centimeters. I'm not sure exactly. But, and if you have something super tiny, you won't be able to see that. So I'm going to make it bigger than it should actually be, let's say 0. Um, 0.0001. If I need to make it bigger, I can. Uh, let's give it a color. Color equals color.red. And let's do this other thing. Let's say make trail equals true. So this will give it, make it leave a trail behind. Uh, and nothing will change except if I run this, you'll see it's not different except it's red. Okay, because what happened also is that the program zooms in to see everything. So even though this is way smaller than the previous one, which is actually a meter radius, uh, that's the default. You can see it all. Now I need to give it some other properties. Proton.m equals mp. This is just associating a property, a of the object properties. So if I say dot m, it's an easier way to reference thing. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but it's a good habit to do that. Um, let's give it a, uh, let's, I'm going to say this velocity equals five, uh, but I really want the momentum. So let's say, and that, that's just so I can change this. Proton dot p equals proton dot m times vector 0, V, 0. Now it's in the, I guess I should change that. Let's say this, times V times vector 0, 0, 1. That way we, we can change uh, the initial velocity. Okay, so I have the that. Oh, did I do the charge? I did the charge. Uh, now I should do time, time equals 0. And the time step, this one's a little bit tough, right? Because if it's going... How big of a time step do I need in between calculations? How small is small enough? Let's just start with something really small. So say 1 e negative 5. That's my time step. Okay. Now how long do I want this to run? I want to run this in, in for like half of a circle, a quarter of a circle. So it's going to start off in the y direction. So as long as it's not half, as long as the y momentum is greater than 0, I'm going to run the program. So I'm going to say this, while uh, proton dot p dot y that's the y component of the momentum while that is greater than zero do the following uh, I need to do the rate function here let's just start it off uh, at a thousand um, this says how many calculations should you do a second 
it's not going to do more than a thousand. And this way you can kind of control the speed of how things uh, work out. Otherwise, it may just go too fast. So now the first thing is to calculate that magnetic force. So F is going to be the cross product, which is built into Python, of QV, so Q times proton dot P divided by proton dot M. Right, I, I, if I use V, it's not gonna change. I need a vector velocity. So if I take the momentum and divide by the mass, I get the velocity. And then the other product is B. That's it, that's, I calculate the force. Now I need to update the momentum. Proton dot P equals proton dot P plus F times DT. Now you may think something's crazy here, and I could see that, right? This proton dot P equals proton dot P plus F DT doesn't cancel. The proton P's don't cancel because this is not an equal sign. Okay, it is. It's not an algebraic equal sign. This is a make equal to sign. This is take the proton momentum, add FDT, and make it the new momentum. So that's a little bit different if you haven't seen that in, in programming before. Now I need to update the position. Proton.pos is the vector r position. So it's going to be equal to the old proton position plus the velocity. So proton.p times dt divided by proton.m. Uh, and then I can update time just for fun. And then let's do this. Let's print out the time. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's see. Is this going to run? You never know. Sometimes I make mistakes on purpose, which are never on purpose. But There you go. Look, check that out. So there's your curving motion. It took uh, 10 to the negative third seconds. So let's actually, if we want to do a full loop, I could do this. Like now I could do while t is less than uh, 10 to the negative 2. That would be, be 10 times as long. I don't need to print the time. I guess I can do that. Okay, let's run it. Ah, uh, while t is less than ah uh, 10 e negative 2. Okay, see here a problem in that it doesn't completely get back on the same path and you see a little jaggedness in there. That may be an indication that the, uh, the time step is too, uh, too large. So let's just make this uh, half as big and let's just see what happens. So let's say uh, five times 10 to the negative six, so it's half as much. Oh, it's gonna go slower now, I didn't change the rate. Okay, so it, that's not bad, that's not bad. It's gonna, this skip right here, that's just a display error, it's not a problem. And this is in 3D, you can rotate it around. But there we have it now. Um, we could do all sorts of things, I'm not sure what you want to do. Uh, I would like to change it to an electron. And let's just see what happens. So uh, let's change this to uh, me equals, I can't remember what the mass of an electron is, I gotta look it up. Now I know you're thinking, hey, shouldn't you just memorize all this stuff? Let's make it an anti-proton. So an anti-proton has the same mass, but a negative charge. So now I'm just gonna go down here and change this to negative, and let's change the color to yellow. Because you know, anti-protons are yellow. Now it goes in the opposite direction, right? Because uh, the direction of the force is now initially to the right, and it will always be to the right of the motion, makes it move in a circle that way. What if I increase the value of the magnetic field? What if I double this magnetic field? Okay, it looks the same. <laughs> it looks the same because um, this thing scaled out. But the, the circle that's moving in is actually smaller. So let's put this, let's make this smaller. Let's make this two times 10 to the negative third, and let's just see what happens. Okay, that didn't work. That was too small. Okay, so let's put this back at negative four. Okay, ooh, ooh, yeah, look at that. Okay, so what happened here is my, I have way, wow. I, my time, this is so cool the time step is way, way, way too large. So it calculates change in momentum, it jumps way over here, so you miss all that middle stuff. 
So let's put this at um, 10 to the negative 5. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah. So let's say, say 1e negative 5. Let's see if it's working now. Negative 5. Okay, let's make it even smaller. E negative 6. Okay, that, that's pretty cool. Okay, I like that. Okay, let's make the time step a little bit faster. I think I'm going to do one more thing. Oh, okay, i got to increase the time step. So let's see. Uh, let's say 7. I'm having a lot of fun here. I don't know about you. Okay, that's good. Now, one more thing over here. Let's say it has a velocity in the, uh, not the y direction, not just the y direction, but the uh, x, y direction. So now it's shooting off at an angle. This is not going to be a problem. It's still going to do a circle, right? It just started at an initial velo different velocity. What if I do this though? What if I give it some z component of velocity? Check that out. Okay, let's make that a little bit better. Uh, I think I want this, let's put this at uh, 0.3, a smaller velocity, and the time, let's put this at uh, a little bit longer. So what's happening here is that in the, the force is always going to be in the xy plane. It's not going to change the momentum in the Z plane. So it just moves along at a constant velocity in the Z plane and we get this spiral motion right there. Check that out. Is that cool? Okay, I think I have enough to get you started to play with this thing um, and I will let you go. There's a whole bunch of other questions we can talk about, but I wanted to just introduce you to modeling the motion of a particle in a constant magnetic field. There are a lot of applications for this. I'll talk about those applications later, but for now I'm going to end it here and talk to you physics people later.